are you interested into what I've been buying this month? Because uh, I haven't bought anything since last August. That doesn't mean that I haven't received anything or that I haven't received any yarn that other people sent me. But this month, I have bought a couple of things. So hello, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my little place on the internet. Uh, my name is Isabel and I will link down below an episode where I talk more, more about who I am and my life and my family and everything. Uh, I am in France and today it's going to be an episode about my Yarn No Buy Year project that I started almost two years ago, two years next December. Uh, or next January, because the formal starting was, was in January 2021. I was in a place where I was overstimulated by what people were buying, what I was watching on YouTube, on Instagram, people holding hordes and hordes and boxes and boxes of yarn, showing they were living it in a young store. And if this is you and you feel comfortable into that life, it's perfect. You do you. But at some point, I really was over, overwhelmed by, by everything that I had been buying. And I had started to buy yarn without a project. What I have always been doing from you know, my teen years where I had no money is buy yarn for a project, knit it, and that's it. And maybe rearrange the leftovers for something else. But at that point, I had been buying yarn because other people had been showing it and buying it. So, um, and I was thinking, so maybe I should buy this and that because it's going to be off and I won't retrieve it and, and it's going to be... Um, all sold out or discontinued and I won't have it. So I decided first on a Yarn No Buy Year project that I underwent for the first year. And this was quite of a success because um, I'm still <laughs> knitting from um, my stash because yarn comes my way, whether I buy some or people send me some and we exchange yarn. So I'm... I'm in that situation where I'm kind of very far away from having knitting all of my stash. And my goal, it may take me two years, three years from now, is to knit every sweater quantities I have bought uh, and that I have in my stash. So um, that's one thing. That first year where, where I was good and I was consciously buying, I, I, I was mindfully buying yarn for different reasons and I was happy with the outcome. That's not a money problem. It was mostly uh, I buy and I buy and I buy to maybe feel myself and you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I, I was following my own guidelines. I was feeling free within these guidelines and I was thinking, no, I can't buy that yarn because um, I can't, it's in my rules and I want to be faithful to my rules and I'm making me myself accountable at talking about it to you. So I want to keep my word and whatever and everything. So I was not buying yarn, but last year, uh, 2022, I bought almost 200 or 250 euros worth of digital patterns. I kind of compensated not for not buying yarn with another, another segment of my passion and my hoarding desire uh, was well, buying online patterns. These pattern, patterns, for most of them, are still st sitting in my online, li online library, whether it is on my computer or in Ravelry. So it has me, it had me thinking uh, and modifying a bit my rules for this year, 2023, and including online patterns and patterns or books 
into uh, my regulations. I kind of restraining myself from buying books because so far I have, I have bought only one, which was uh, La Bienemise book. And this month I bought two. So three books in one year, that's, that's okay. And uh, um, I love books. I do browse through them. I read them. I maybe not really use them to knit patterns from them, but I get a lot of inspiration from my book. And I love browsing through them. I, I read them on a regular basis, all of them. So it's not, it's not an expense I do not want to be making. It's just I don't want to be buying too much of things that are going to be sitting there and not being used. So books are not quite in that category, but I'm still quite mindful when I want a book. And I only bought one digital pattern and that was one recommendation from one of you. I bought it, I cast it on. So I was very, I'm very happy where I am right now. So I'm going to be talking about these two books I, that I bought this month in October 2023. And that's it for this month. And then I will elaborate on where I am with my expenses for uh, this year 2023. Okay, after this very, very long introduction about my project, I will link a couple of videos down below um, if you want to know more about my regulations and why I said them that way. What am I wearing? I am wearing my Pulse and Z that I need, uh, when was that? Uh, last year, in between January and April 2022. It's knit uh, from mohair from the Pyrenees. And this is not the fluffy mohair that has been brushed. It's Cardé, and it's it gives a very very good stitch definition with all the quality of mohair that is light and 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 warm and things like that. The yellow part is a special edition that Len Paysan made with another company that is called Hall in Paris. It's a concept store, I think, about colors and natural products and natural fibers and things like that. And this. These special editions, I think they dyed four or five different colorways on Len Paysan's uh, yarn and with natural yarn. And uh, this one, uh, it looks like a golden yellow to me and it's called uh, golden brown. Whatever. And Pulsel Zenzi is by Maria Meli Designs. She stopped designing year and a half ago, something like that, or maybe two years ago, and made all of her patterns available for free. So she was a professional designer and she stopped designing. Her patterns are exceptional. Please have a look. I will link her Ravelry store where you can get most of her designs. This one is was from a book and it hasn't been released online, so there is no PDF for that, that pattern. Pulzenzi. I really love the contrast between the yellow and the royal blue. I still have enough, I think, from the royal blue, the mohair, uh, to make a vest or maybe a short-sleeved um, sweater. And I've seen a lot of people knitting with royal blue in the last few weeks on Instagram, of course, and of course I'm influenced. Uh, but I think I have enough to knit, I have to see, I have enough to knit at least a vest in this color and I really want to cast that on, but I need to finish my current uh, sweaters. I have two on my needles for now. I need to finish my current sweaters before I cast something on. I had a, a, at least a sweater on. I had other things in my mind, but uh, seeing all the Royal Blue project, seeing that I still have some left and uh, how much I enjoy this sweater and wearing it and the yarn. Um, yeah, I, I, you'll see what I decide to be doing, but uh, I guess I will cast on when, when something with that, my, my leftovers from uh, my Royal Blue mohair. Okay. First of the two books that I bought, because the first one I pre-ordered, it's going to be coming out on October 
31st, I think. I'm pre-filming because some of my sons will be home and I won't have enough time to be filming that video to be up at the end of the week, the first week of November. So I have not received the book yet. I will receive it, will be shipped uh, after its release, of course. And when I was buying that book, pre-ordering the book, uh, I looked into my want, to, want list for books and uh, um, I ordered Amy, Amy Herzog's, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, Amy, Amy Herzog's Ultimate Sweater Book. This book was published in 2018 and uh, is about how you build the sweater construction with, and based on the armhole, whether you want raglan, whether you want a yoke, whether you want a drop sleeve. I'm not knitting drop sleeves, I don't like drop sleeves, but drop sleeves, setting sleeves, all of that, I'm very, so very curious about that. And uh, uh, I really, really wanted that book from what I had read and what I had, what other people had said or written about it. I'm not disappointed, even though you're going to tell me you already have another one on the same subject. We, yeah, yeah, almost the same one. It's Anne Bud's top-down sweater. This one is about the same kind of book where you have recipes for um, building a sweater, knitting a sweater by yourself. Uh, so, but it's only for top-down sweaters. On Amy's book, it's more, it's a wider type of uh, sweater construction, more, more sweater construction, and both of them I'm going to just be showing that way up quite quickly, so because there is a copyright, of course, on the book. Um, both of them are recipes, mostly, and there are a few patterns. Um, you see this one, there are a few patterns. There are a few patterns, for example, or that you can knit. Um, both of them are recipes for sweater constructions. They give you all the calculations for um, your gauge and whichever construction you want and, you know, all the centimeters and stuff like that for each type of armhole shaping from yoke to raglan to satin to um, drops shoulders. And uh, Amy's book um, also talks about bottom-up and pieced sweater, sweaters when uh, Anne Buds is only about uh, top-down. So um, I've been reading and browsing through, that, through these two books quite a lot because I'm so much into trying, I'm, I'm maturing that idea. It takes me a lot of time to be deciding what I want to be doing because each time I say, okay, next sweater, I go for myself, I need my gauge swatch and uh, I make all the calculations and then I have it the way I like. Because for example, I think this sweater, I like it a lot. It's quite boxy, but there is a lot of fabric under my arm. And I don't think I, I don't like it that much. It, it doesn't show too, not, not too much fabric and fabric and, and with the color work, it was also going that way. But uh, some other later sweaters I've knit after that, I arranged my yoke depth to what I like and cast it on more stitches under the armhole so that there is less fabric under the arm, but still the same number of stitches for the body. So I've already been thinking about that quite a bit and I want to go deeper into that and make my own sweaters. I have my own pattern. I have a couple ideas. I have a couple yarn I think I want to be knitting with um, this special thing, which is going to be extremely simple, but not necessarily simple to uh, come up with, but it's simple looking sweater. So yes, I had been looking into that book for quite a long, it was on my list for quite a long time, for quite some time. And uh, I'm very happy I have it right now uh, with me. And uh, uh, I've been browsing through a lot and I've been reading through and comparing what the two books are offering. And uh, it's sort of <laughs> making my own education on the subject. 
Okay, so next book I'm waiting for, I haven't received it yet, is a book by uh, uh, Christina McGrath and Sarah Walworth. Once again, I'm very, very, very sorry if I'm butchering, butchering your names. And um, they are tech editors. And uh, I've heard about that book on one of Ro Roxanne Richardson's videos, one of the latest ones. As, am I, as I am filming, and she had an interview with both of them. And uh, they were talking about their job as tech, editor, tech editors, and I am so interested into this type of talk, this type of work and the way tech editors talk about their work, because I think it's helping me Bet, be a better knitter, even though I'm very far away from designing, and but I want to make my own sweater. And this fall into the same type of um, awareness about what a pattern needs to be, the difference between the tech part and the design part, how your sweater is going to be falling correctly on too many body shapes and body types. All of that was so interesting. So their book is The Knitting Pattern Writing Handbook, How to Write Great Patterns That Knitters Will Love to Make. What a program. <laughs> what a program. And the preface is by um, Franço Françoise Danoy, French Françoise Danoy. Uh, she's from Australia, from Mary, Mary culture, and I think one of her parents is French. I'm not quite sure, maybe some other people from her family. Anyway, uh, I like very much her universe and what she, and what she publishes and her patterns. And uh, yeah, uh, so I'm very, very interested into reading about what she has to say about that book and, and, and browsing through the book itself. Because I'm going to link the video and uh, for you, if you want to have a listen to that or uh, watch it, it's extremely educated. It's a good education. Um, quality videos with quality people, high standards, and that's not something that we are seeing much. Uh, recently. And uh, both of them also have a YouTube channel, Tech Tip Talks, and I've, I've watched a couple videos from them, also extremely interesting, also extremely educational, and if you are into knowing more about the technical part of, of, of knitting a sweater or knitting a pattern, Without necessarily being interested into designing your own pattern, it's a very great resource. They are really interesting, and I do encourage you to uh, give them an ear or watch their videos. You may hear Ramses purring. He's very close to the microphone and very close to me. He's on the table, so <laughs> please excuse him. He's if we ignore him, he's going to either come onto my laps or uh, walk away. Okay, numbers. Um, so both books were, so the first book, Amy's book, was 25 euros and 41 cents. I will link all the ISBN and, and, and numbers like that where you can find these books close by to you in a uh, bookstore next or uh, close by to you or online bookstore maybe. So Amy's book was 25 euros and 41 cents and uh, um, the tech editing book by um, Christina and Sarah's, uh, Sarah's book was 19 euros and 87 cents. So that's a total of 45 euros and 28 cents for these two books that I think are going to be really worth maybe more than even what I've been paying for. I'm sure for the quality reading I'm going to be having and maybe the inspiration I'm going to be having. So since the beginning of the year, 
So I uh, bought Neon and New Tools by La Bien Aimée, Aimé Gilles. So it was 39 euros and 71 cents. So, so far for the whole year, I have spent 84 euros and 99 cents on books. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm very happy because also there were a couple books I was very tempted to be buying. One from Len Magazine, one from Amerisu once again. And I thought you already have many things in the same type of, of patterns. So maybe, maybe wait, wait for a bit and see if you still want to buy the book and if you still want to buy it you will order it and that's it. And the desire has faded. So um, I have only bought three books thus far. And the grand total for the whole 2023 year thus far is going to jump. Okay. Uh, so from January to October, well, in October is uh, 1,282.23. That makes uh, 1,28 euros and 22 cents per month that includes a lot of yarn i bought a lot of yarn this summer during my vacation i send out a lot of yarn too so uh, all in all all in all that's not bad it's not I, i'm about the same at the same place where i was last year when last year i had bought a lot of online patterns and maybe a less a, le, a bit less yarn so I'm starting to try to reflect on my year, my no buy year for 2023 and analyze how, how I've been spending money and um, if I could have been spending less on some parts, maybe, maybe. What I've learned con regarding books or concerning books and patterns is what I just said. The desire fades away when there is something that you want. And I think it's the same, sorry, the same with, I'm hungry, sorry, the same with Jan. The desire is spiking out. It, it burns inside and, and, and there are spikes that go out and this is the only thing I, you see. I want that yarn because it's going to go, um, it, everyone is going to be buying it they will, everyone is going making things and I, I want so the fear of missing out I want that yarn because XYZ has done XYZ and I want to be doing the same thing you buy the yarn but it takes you five years to cast on the project um, I want this and that pattern because I want to be making it in the future yeah, and one year after that, you still have 50 of the patterns you've bought during the year and they're all sitting there, maybe you need one or two. So all of that really helps me to be more mindful about what I spend. I've always said, it's not a matter of money. I've never overspent. I've never been choosing between eating or knitting. Never. And I'm, I know I am very fortunate to be in that position because some people are not and, and they can't buy what they want because they don't have enough to be eating or having a roof over their head. I'm, you know, I'm supporting my youngest son who's a student. I pay everything for it. I pay for my house, my own living expenses and everything. I have a full-time job. So it never was a question of money for, my, for me. It was more a question of accumulation and why do I accumulate? I still haven't the answer to that question. I still have to work on that and think about that. But I'm on the process of being more mindful of what I'm doing. And I do hope that at some point um, I'll, have, I'll have either an explanation or rational be behind all of that. And uh, that I will be able to be buying only what I need when I need it. Okay, so that's going to be it for today. I do hope it was of some entertainment for you and I could be maybe uh, with you for less than an hour while you were knitting or while you were commuting. 
Uh, I thank you very much for being here with me. I thank you very much for trying to place joy and happiness into your life because it's not coming all by itself and we do have to work on it, especially in these dark times where war and are raging in the world and keeping me out of sleep, I have to say. And yes, please try to place joy and happiness into your life. And the, your knitting is one way of doing so. And if you can't do it for yourself, do it for the people and send them their joy, your joy and happiness so that they can use it and have, have it into their own life. And uh, yes, I hope I will see you next time.